In this video, I'll show you how you can tune the joystick function in Sim Racing Studio for Star Wars Squadrons. Since Star Wars Squadron doesn't have native telemetry output, you can use the joystick function within Sim Racing Studio to get motion for your platform. I've created another video that shows you how to do that, the tutorial and step-by-step -step guide, and that's linked below. Star Wars Squadron is a little bit different than other flight sims, simply because it tends to use yaw a lot more than roll. For example, if I push the joystick to the right, the spacecraft moves on its right yaw axis, the same thing for left. So you have two options when you can set up Star Wars Squadron. One is either you have it roll, much like what I'm doing right now, where it kind of leans the platform when you're yawing to the right and vice versa. And also when I actually roll the spacecraft, the platform will yaw to the right. Same thing with yawing to the left. I'll show you here in a moment how you can adjust that and switch back and forth by creating two joystick profiles. Each one has their disadvantage and advantage. Um, the current one that you're seeing right now has a little bit more G-forces that you feel continuously as you're yawing to the left and right. The other one here, I'll just show you in a second. By quickly switching within Sim Racing Studio, I can choose another profile. Switch back to Star Wars. And now you'll see, by using the rudder pedals, the platform now rolls on its axis. I use the left joystick and now rotates on the yaw axis. And this is how you get this all set up. The first step in Sim Racing Studio is go to Setup and Joystick. And here you'll see the different joystick profiles that you can select. This is the one that I've created during the HOTIS and rudder tutorial video that I made a little bit earlier. Um, and it's currently set up so that if I move the joystick to the left, it rolls left. Move it to the right, roll the right. Same thing with the rudder pedals. If I rotate to the left, it rotates on the yaw axis to the left. And if I move the rudder pedals to the right, it rotates on the yaw axis to the right. And again, for Star Wars Squadrons, because of the way that the spacecraft work, I want to try it and flip it and see which one I like more. So the first step, what I'll do is actually turn the status to off so that there's no joystick movement um, and motion movement when I'm uh, adjusting the different axis. And then second, I'll go to Duplicate Selected Profile. So I could just use the baseline that I've already created with all the other axes, since I'm not going to be changing the pitch for front and back, as well as the speed RPM. I'll just click Duplicate, change this to SWS, for Star Wars Squadrons, Confirm. And now I can adjust these particular axes while remaining the original one intact. So the first one I'll do is left, which I want to change from roll left on the joystick to my rudder pedals. Currently it shows my joystick, so I'll just click reset. From there, I'll go to the joystick menu, go down to my rudders, make sure it says dual axis. Now I'm going to hold the rudder pedal all the way to the left, and at the same time, click the confirm button. Do the same thing for the right roll. Go in, I'll reset it from the joystick, select my rudder pedals, dual axis, push the rudder pedals on the right, make sure it says the right axis, Hold it there while I click Confirm. Next thing I need to do for Rotate Left, since now I want the joystick to rotate it to the left. Go to the rudder pedals, reset, select my joystick, hold it all the way to the left, and while holding left, click Confirm. And then finally, same thing for the right. Holding it all the way to the right, clicking Confirm. And now it's all set. I'll click Save. And to test it, I'll turn it on. And as you can see, now when I push the joystick to the left, it rotates on the left yaw axis. Same thing for right. And when I do the rudder pedals, it'll roll. Next thing I want to do is tuning. So a couple different things you can do real quick while you're tuning. It's because I like to have a slight curve on my wind, and because it is actually tied to the speed RPM, 
I'll go into wind, and I just like to turn it to a factor of three. That way, it'll slow down and won't be as nearly as much wind when I have the throttle relatively low. And the other thing is adjusting the shakers. So in this particular tuning, I have almost everything turned off except for engine. What engine does is I move the throttle up, there'll be a shaking effect that matches the RPM. I like to set it to five so it's not too intense and has a continuous shake. All the other effects except for suspension are, do not work with the joystick functionality. But what suspension does is if I push it to the left or to the right, it'll shake the appropriate left or right transducers in the front and the same thing for the back. It's primarily for motion pla or platforms that do not have motion. So since this one does, I'm going to turn it off and only use engine. Now on to motion tuning. For motion tuning, you have a, a number of different options. Um, the first one, of course, is power max angle. You can have this set to 100, which means it'll move the platform to 100% of its capabilities. If you don't like the motion at all uh, to be too intense, you can always turn it down to 50. To kind of give you an example, here's the left and right yaw at 100 or 99%. If I push this down to 50, there's quite a lot less movement. Gives a more nuanced feel. If you feel it's too jarring after you have it set up and want to kind of adjust everything as a whole, you can always turn it down by power max angle. This goes for pretty much any tuning that's out there. The next one is smoothing. And what smoothing does is when you have fast joystick movements, one after each other, it tries to limit the total amount of movement as it returns. If I were to crank this up to 100, and do the same joystick movements, you can see sometimes it doesn't quite move at all. This is basically looking for any kind of large spike in the movements, and we'll reduce it by 75% if you have it at 75. If you have it 50, it'll reduce it by 50%. If you have it down to 25, it'll reduce it by 25%. So again, there's more detailed information in the motion tuning guide that I've written, and I have a link for that below as well. Reaction speed, I leave it at 70, since most of the spacecraft in Star Wars squadrons um, are relatively not fast moving in terms of how, when they turn on their axis. So 70 seems to match pretty well with what you see on screen. Boost is pretty much the opposite of smoothing and will amplify small joystick movements. Since there's no real kind of ramp up for joystick telemetry, um, I would recommend as well as Sim Racing Studios to leave this at one, otherwise you'll have extremely jarring movements. Finally, on to the effect sliders. So here, pitch, again, will control the up and down. Setting the slider to 20 will, will give you the maximum amount of pitch possible within the platform. So you can see it's a lot and rather jarring because you can move it quickly back and forth with joystick movements. The same thing with roll. If I push roll all the way up to 20, I'm now getting the maximum amount of roll, which is now controlled by the rudder pedals, for this particular setup. If you push it down to 10, again, it's about half movement, and it's very similar to the same thing setting up max angle. So again, max angle will apply to everything. This allows you to adjust each particular effect as you want. For Star Wars Squadrons, I tend to like it at 15. Still gives up quite a bit of movement, but everyone will have their own kind of preference. This way, it still kind of gives me the feeling of quick action since Star Wars is pretty fast. The next one is yaw, and that is controlled by the left right of the joystick now. Yaw tends to be a little bit more intense than some of the other, other ones. So for the sake of purposes, you can see just even at 15, how much that yaw is on a P6. For an H3 um, or P3, it'll be your traction loss. Um, I highly recommend lowering it at least down to 10. It's still pretty jarring at 10. I like to go all the way down to five. And you can even go lower. But you can see it has a little bit more nuanced feel and isn't quite as jarring in terms of the movement. For the maximum telemetries, leave them all at five. This allows for the maximum amount of movement on the joystick, which then you can change via the sliders. If you lower it, um, you won't get as much motion, um, so, or actually you'll have more intense motion if you lower it. If you raise it, you'll have a lot less motion. Just leave it at five. There's no reason at all to change these values. The only thing you might want to change is adding a negative. So for example, 
yaw is currently set to, to negative 5, what that does is it inverts the axis. So when I move the joystick to the left, it yaws to the left. Same thing if I move the joystick to the right, it yaws to the right. If I were to change this, the axis is inverted, as I'll show you. Now when I move the joystick, it's going the opposite direction. So I'll leave that at negative 5. The rest of the effect sliders are not utilized at all with a joystick telemetry. I like to just turn these all the way down to zero just to make sure that there's nothing that gets in the way. Once you're all done with the particular save, uh, tunings that you like, just click Save, Confirm, and you're all done. So now a quick easy way to test the different types of motion before you load up the game. Let's go back into Setup, I have Joystick. Here I still have Status to On, and it still has the current profile that I set up. So again, using the rudders, I can now rotate the platform. Using the joystick, left and right, impacts the yaw. If I can quickly change that back to the original tuning, the one that I showed in the tutorial, where now joystick rolls the platform and the rudder pedals yaw it. And that's pretty much it. When you're all done, you can click the status symbol off or leave it on and load up Star Wars Squadrons once again. So now that we're back in Star Wars Squadrons, I have the original joystick profile, which has the yaw axis bound to roll via the joystick. Again, that gives you that continuous G-Force feeling. But quickly slowing down and switching over to the other profile. I'll off tab out. Go into some of scene studio. Choose the other profile. We're back in this Star Wars Squadrons. And now I have Yaw bound to the joystick. And Roll is bound to the rudder pedals. I prefer this particular tuning um, as it gives a much more realistic kind of feeling to what I'm seeing on the screen as well as in the platform movement. But every one of them will have their own personal preference. Really all I wanted to do is show the different ways that you can set up the joystick and the, all the features that Sim Racing Studio has to offer. So again, thanks for watching. I hope this helped out. Have a great fight. For the Empire. <laughs>